my name's Paul Pettigrew. I'm 24 and I've just recently set up GamTalk. So GamTalk's aim is to deliver first-hand personal uh, presentations about the dangers of problem gambling and the impact it can have on a person's okay. life. Uh, why are you first keen to get involved in this? Uh, problem gambling is something that deeply impacted my life. Uh, I became addicted to gambling when I was about 18. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the most horrendous time of my life and it pushed me right to the edge. Mm -hmm. uh, for some background on me, I was like, I was always a confident boy mm -hmm. growing up, borderline, probably mm -hmm. cocky. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was always happy and uh, my whole life was football. Mm -hmm. I'd play three times a day, I'd be playing in school, right after school with my brother and then training later on at night mm -hmm. uh, and I was never I was never the best but I always worked worked hard and I ended up did all right. I played my school district team, signed with Dunbar and played with Morton. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I did all right with it. Um and that was like a background on me. The reason why I got into this is then I got released from Morton when I was seventeen yeah. and I just completely got scunnered. I fell right out of love with football and one of my pals one day took me to a casino. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know there was casinos in <laughs> Scotland, honestly. I didn't I had no clue about gambling at mm -hmm. all. And I went and from that first night I was I was hooked. Mm -hmm. And it just replaced the kind of hole that was left behind mm -hmm. by football. So from being like a happy kind of full life, full of ambition at seventeen, by nineteen, mm -hmm. I was completely and utterly hooked. I was depressed, I wasn't playing football, I was mm -hmm. I was a completely different person. So something I've wanted to do for a long time now. With GamTalk, what type of, sort of services do they offer? What so GamTalk, um, what my hope is with it is to catch people when they're young. Mm -hmm. It's something that I feel you know, when I look back to my time in school or any young, uh, any football club I was at, sorry, mm -hmm. we never got told about gambling. There was mm -hmm. always, um, there was always presentations in school about drink and drugs mm -hmm. and smoking, but there was never anything about gambling. So my idea is to try to get them young in their sports clubs and schools mm -hmm. and just give them the proper information on it so that they can then make informed decisions when they're older. There is the services like Gambos Anonymous and stuff who can I deal more when somebody is addicted yeah. and they're great services but I think my idea is to try you know inform them when they're young. Yeah. Obviously you said how you started when you're about 18, has mm -hmm. there been a trend with other people maybe uh, involved with gambling? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say there's a, a trend that I can mm -hmm. identify anyway but what I would say is that uh, the research that I'm doing is quite some of the numbers that are involved are quite staggering. There was one from the BBC uh, posted just at the end of 18 where they identified in Scotland, England and Wales there was over 450,000 uh, potential problem gamblers between 11 and 16 who bet regularly. And that's a massive number yes. and that was the end of the end and it quadrupled within a year so the numbers are going you know, sky high, mm -hmm. and that's 11 to 16, that's yeah, quite yeah. scary. Obviously, underage, either using their mum and dad's betting account or buying scratch cards or yeah. stuff like that. So, the numbers are definitely increasing. That's that's more people than what at that age drink or smoke yeah. or take drugs. So, that is quite a big problem. Do you think what you're seeing the kids are sort of underage there, do you think they're unaware of the sort of dangers when they start chasing losses? Definitely, 100%. That, they're never taught about it, so you can't expect them yeah. to, to ever really know. Um, as I said, it was something that I was completely unaware of. My dad owns a shop across from my local high school, yeah. and I help out there on days out, and I get in all the boys and stuff, and I was outside just at the end before the COVID yeah. stuff happened, yeah. and I asked a group of boys what they felt gambling was, what is gambling, yeah. they're about 15, 16. Yeah. And they said football curtains, and I said, fair enough, that's a form of gambling, but what do you actually feel gambling is? Yeah. And they responded, a way of making money, which I thought was just scary. Mm. It, it was, if that's what they're feeling that gambling is, then something needs to, something mm. needs to be done about it. Did you say is a major sort of issues within gambling like football as a specific sort of sport? 
Uh, the, I fear alone there's obviously been stuff about Lee Griffiths yeah. and Brian Rice, the Hamilton manager, so there is a kind of, they're quite synonymous I'd say, gambling and football, particularly because of the sponsorship as well. Yeah. I feel like on every advertising board and on uh, every game at half time, you're bombarded mm-hmm. with lad books or William, William Hill um, adverts. So I think nowadays, gambling and football, they almost come hand in hand, yeah. which for boys who are grown up, eight, nine, ten years old, watching football, if they start making that comparison early, yeah. um, then you know, that could be quite dangerous. Now, what you just touched on there about sponsorships, do you find it sort of hypocritical when you've got like Scottish football, the SFA, supporting gambling prevention, but then are spawn like the three major league and two cups are sponsored all by gambling sites? I I would say that um yes and no. We neighbour the richest league mm-hmm. in the world. Mm-hmm. We need to get more money from somewhere. And so I can completely understand that they take sponsorship money mm-hmm. from these companies. Yeah. But what I would say is that if you're going to plaster these advertisements, which advertisements in their basic king are, you know, trying to entice you to gamble. Mm-hmm. If you're going to do that at such a big scale, you need to make sure that you're properly mm-hmm. educating people on the fact that there is a harmful side to it. Gambling in itself is entertainment, and if you do it properly, it can be fun, but it can be addictive, so you need mm-hmm. to be teaching people the right way to do it properly. And, um, what I will say is that putting Please gamble responsibly. Mm-hmm. At the end of an advert, it's just it's it's not, not enough. It's something not enough. That's just kind of falling on from that. Do you think there's been enough done from these sites to try and prevent problem gamblers from the gambling? Yeah, from right. Sites sites. Yeah. Again, what I would say is that you could argue that the alcohol companies don't do enough to tackle alcohol addiction. You know, yeah. there, there is that side where they might kind of say, "Is it their job?" Yeah. and I don't think it would be fair to tar them all with the same brush. There probably is some who do more or would be willing to do more. Mm-hmm. But I have to admit, myself when I had days where I, you know, I was miserable and I know that if people at the top of these companies are making millions and millions of pounds, mm-hmm. knowing that I, some of that money comes from you know, people who are in desperate situations mm-hmm. and gambling away their last pennies, it does make it does make you quite angry, I, but I would, I would say that it's not their job. It's our job as adults. Mm-hmm. So, coaches and teachers and parents, people who have a legal responsibility over kids, you know, they can do more. And mm-hmm. if they're properly educated, that's the whole point. Then. So you obviously you touched on this earlier uh, about putting like when the fun stops stop at mm-hmm. the end of an advert. Do you think they're trying to maybe put a persona out that they are trying to prevent gambling when in reality they're not trying as hard as they possibly could? Do you mean in relation to the when the fun yeah. stop stops? Yeah. I wouldn't knock any scheme that in their, in their heart of hearts that they're really trying, then I wouldn't knock anybody's work. However, you know, adverts... If I see an advert, I go make a cup of tea. Or if it's on YouTube, I skip by it. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? That's what a lot of people do. I think, in my personal opinion, mm-hmm. it's not the way to tackle it at all. Yeah. Um, you need to be educating people young. And of course, I'm obviously biased because it's what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. But somebody who can stand in front of these children and who is relatable, but not just telling a sympathy story, who has mm-hmm. the facts, statistics to back it up and to give ways most importantly to prevent against the problem yeah. I think would be a far better way to, to try yeah. to talk about, tackle the problem sorry. So obviously it's just recently been started up but what is like your sort of moving forward and long term goals for Gam Talk? Uh, well I was 20 years old and I was crippled with this addiction and it got to a point again it's not a sympathy story but I didn't want to I didn't want to live anymore with it. Mm-hmm. My goal is to make sure that that doesn't happen to as many 
young people as I possibly can, um, which means just simply getting in as many places as I can, as many schools, yeah. sports clubs, to talk and to yeah. try to teach as many people as I can, as well as young people though, there is presentations and a workshop that I've set up, which uh, has to be trialled yet, but for adults, for coaches, for parents, for teachers, mm -hmm. to go and, you know, give them the the information and the skills to actually identify mm -hmm. a potential problem within their club or their own children that they're yeah. responsible of. But I would also actively encourage any adult to sit in on the okay. uh, on the presentations that I do for kids because there is a lot to be learned and I think there is a generation of adults mm -hmm. who went through school like myself and mm -hmm. were never taught so they missed out on that completely. And I think if you can catch them at the end while teaching yeah. people young then you can can help eradicate this problem and but it'll take time. It's also a very serious issue but thank you for sharing the experiences. No problem, thanks very much.